Hello everybody, Pastor Steve here. Thank you for joining me for today's devotion. You can be opening your Bible with me to the book of Ezekiel chapter 33. We've jumped ahead several chapters to chapter 33 and while you're opening your Bible there, some of you may have noticed, been wondering why I'm not wearing my eyeglasses. Well, it's because I had cataract surgery and the multifocus lens inserted so that hopefully I don't need glasses anymore. So that's what's going on. And appreciate your prayers for my eyes to continue healing, healing very well. Today, Ezekiel chapter 33, um, there is so much in this chapter we could talk about. I mean, we, we could talk about... Ezekiel's duty as a watchman, where God said, you are to warn the, the people of Israel of the impending judgment that I'm bringing on them for their sin. And if you don't warn them, they will die in their sin, but I'll hold their blood at your hand. So we could talk about that and how you and I as followers of Christ have a responsibility to warn lost people about hell and the consequences of sin, their need for Jesus Christ. We could talk about uh, the emphasis in this chapter on individual responsibility and finishing well because he talks in, 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 in this chapter about uh, if someone had been a sinner but then they repent and do righteous, then it will end well for them. But if they have been righteous and then turn their back on righteousness and, and fall into sin, it will not end well for them. We could talk about how we finish matters. It's not just how you start or how you run the middle of the race, how you live in the middle of your life, but it's, but also how you finish matters. Um, we could talk about the total devastation of the city of Jerusalem, the country of Judah, the death of thousands of the citizens, the deportation, because he describes it here, the, the devastation that took place in 587 into 586 BC is when it was finally uh, concluded, and and um, you remember Ezekiel was serving in Babylon where he was exiled during the 590, 598, 597 deportation, and he and he he kept warning the Jews Jerusalem is not going to be spared because of their sin. And in this chapter, we read about the devastation that that took place as Ezekiel had predicted, as Jeremiah had 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 prophesied. Uh, a few years uh, later, we, all, all of that. But that's not what spoke to me in this chapter. What spoke to me personally is how the chapter ends, starting with verse 30. God is speaking to Ezekiel, the prophet, and he says, God says to Ezekiel, but as for you, son of man, your fellow citizens, fellow Jews here in Babylon in exile, who talk about you by the walls and in the doorways of of the houses, you know, they, they were, when you're not around there talking about you, it's kind of like, uh, you know, people we are talking about the, the preacher at lunch on Sundays or whatever. Um, he said that in their houses, and so they, they speak to one another and each to his brother saying, come now and hear what the message is, which comes forth from the Lord. And they, they come to you as people come and sit before you as my people and hear your words. Man, he's a great preacher. Let's go. We're going to, you need to come with me to hear this guy. He's really, really good. But here's the part that grabbed my attention and I find to be so very sad. They sit before you as my people and hear your words, but they do not do them. Hear your words. They, they hear the message, the sermon, but they do not do them. They don't obey them. They don't change. For they, he says, for they do the, lust, the lustful desires expressed by their mouth. They, they follow their lust and their passions, no matter how much preaching they hear, and their heart goes after their gain, materialism on and on. And then it gets even sadder, verse 32. He said, behold, you, Ezekiel, you, the, this great preacher, you are to them like a sensual song, a beautiful song by one who has a beautiful voice and plays well on an instrument. For they hear your words, but they do not practice them. And then he ends in verse 33. Oh, they know there's a prophet. Ezekiel, when you speak and preach, to them, it's like beautiful music, beautiful, talented music. They enjoy it. They love it. But it doesn't make a bit of difference in their lives. 
Years ago, apparently I had read this chapter and written a note in my Bible at these verses. And what I had written years ago was this. It takes more than good preaching. It requires obedient listeners. And, and today, you know, people will uh, sometimes talk about certain churches or certain pastors focus too much on entertainment rather than the gospel. And there's some truth in that. But it's equally true that a lot of people go to churches that don't do what critics call entertainment worship and entertainment church, but they love that hellfire and damnation preaching. They love that preacher and they love that music. Not because God's changing their lives, but because it just, it's like beautiful, there's something beautiful about it. They just, they like it, but they don't do it. So you can go to church and like the preaching. You can go to church and like the music. It doesn't mean anything's happening in your life. In fact, if when you talk about how great a worship service was, it's more often than not about how great that sermon was or how great that music was, and less and less about, you know, man, I really met God today at church. And I prayed, and I interacted with Jesus, and God spoke to my heart, and I responded, and here's how he's changing me, and here's what he's... If, 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 if your bragging on church is more about great preaching and great worship and less about what Jesus is doing in your life and what Jesus means to you, you may you 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 may just have a little bit of the problem these listeners in Ezekiel's day had you you may have some of that same problem and that's sad as i've gotten older and preached more my prayers more and more especially leading up to sundays I pray for me and the, and the message and so on, but I pray just as much for God's people, for the congregation. Because if you don't hear God and respond to God, it's just entertainment. Even if we don't do anything different, it's still just entertainment. And that's one of the techniques Satan uses to keep you from growing. Not in knowledge, but in Christ-like character. When you come Sunday, you come to interact with God. I hope the preaching's good. I hope the music's good. I'm, yes. But more than anything, I hope you meet Jesus and you change because that's what worship is. That's what worship is. God bless you. I'll see you. Um, I'll see you tomorrow as we shift over to 2 Kings. And when you get there in our reading plan, 2 Kings chapter... 24 tomorrow, you'll understand why. I'll see you then.